A. Will regulated militia be necessary to the security of a free state? The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Welcome to another edition of Bearing Arms, Cam and Company. My name is Cam Edwards. I am glad that you've joined us on the program today. Uh, things look a little bit different than uh, they normally do. I am here at the home office instead of the uh, Farmville studio. It's because my uh, wife is off uh, for her uh, father's funeral, so I'm uh, home playing dad duty today and uh, the rest of the week and early dismissal from school and I, all, all kinds of issues. You don't care about that stuff. Anyway, uh, that's why I'm not in studio. We'll not be in studio tomorrow either, hopefully back on Thursday. But you know what? The show must go on. And uh, we've got a good one for you. We're actually going to be talking about what is going on south of the border. You know, the uh, Mexican government suing many, but not all, uh, major gun manufacturers, uh, saying that uh, these companies are intentionally fueling violence south of the border. Maybe they should be suing Facebook or uh, other social media companies for doing the same. I, I don't know why they're not, but we'll get into that in just a moment. Before we do, however, do you miss President Trump? Well, you're not alone, and I'm coming to you with a very special offer that you do not want to miss. Now is your chance to enter to win one of six signed photos of President Trump, and these were hand-signed by President Trump, and soon one could be hanging up in your home. When President Trump signed these photos, he wanted to make sure that all of his supporters had the chance to receive one, and now is your chance. All you have to do is text GUNS to 55404 today for your chance to win a beautiful photo of President Trump and First Lady Melania Trump hand-signed by President Trump himself by texting GUNS to 55404 right now. You'll also get exclusive double entry activation for a limited time. Again, text GUNS to 55404 to have your name entered twice to win a hand-signed Trump photo. You don't want to miss this. Contest in soon. Paid for by the National Republican Senatorial Committee. All right, so let's talk about what's going on south of the border in Mexico. As I mentioned, the uh, Mexican government uh, filing a lawsuit against many gun makers, not all of them. Interestingly enough, uh, Six Hour, not a party to that lawsuit. Uh, coincidentally or not, Mexico is also trying to uh, purchase about $5 million worth of Six Hour firearms for the Mexican military. So maybe they don't want to, you know, scuttle that deal by accusing Six Hour of fueling the cartel violence. All the other companies that they're not trying to do business with, on the other hand, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're happy trying to take them to court. So I ran across this story today from, uh, I think this was insightcrime.org on the uh, social media in Mexico and the weapons trafficking that is rife on Mexican social media. Take a look at this. Arms traffickers in Mexico, they write, continue to sell their wares on social media networks that offer them uh, visibility and anonymity and in complete defiance of measures taken to stop them. A recent video circulated on social media shared by leading Mexican journalist Ciro gomez Levia features a WhatsApp user showing images from a purported catalog of more than 100 weapons shared with potential customers by WhatsApp. Uh, the user, registered as Squalo, offers firearms, grenades, and sophisticated accessories such as silencers and scopes in Mexico City. The advertised prices for the weapons were three times higher than those at gun stores in the United States, according to Gomez uh, Leva. Um, I don't know about you, I have yet to run across a grenade at a gun store. Every time I go into a gun store, not only are they uh, sold out of, you know, 9mm these days, but they're grenades! You just can't find a good grenade anymore. Not that you ever really could. But this demonstrates that as much as the Mexican government wants to blame U.S. gun makers and the firearms industry north of their border, for the cartel violence, clearly the cartels have access to items that are not available at your local Bass Pro, right? Inside Crime uh, goes on to say the use of social media platforms to sell weapons is stubbornly proving difficult to resolve, despite measures taken to stop it by governments and companies alike. Gosh, so it's tough to stop people from breaking the law. Hmm. Despite the best efforts of companies, despite the best efforts of government, why is that excuse okay when it comes to social media, but it's not okay 
when it comes to the firearms industry. Just, just curious. Inside Crime writes, in 2016, Facebook and Instagram banned the sale of weapons on their platforms worldwide after being pressured to do so by then-U.S. President Barack Obama. But very quickly, this ban seemed to be relatively toothless since dedicated groups continued to thrive. In 2020, Mexico's Defense Ministry announced its own crackdown on internet sales of weapons, but both groups and individual sales listings for firearms continue to be commonplace on Facebook. In a search on the social media platform, Inside Crime rapidly found several groups. One of these, Venta de Armas de Fuego Mexico, was created in August of this year. It had about 1,500 members and was selling Beretta and Ruger pistols with dozens of comments by interested buyers. Now, again, I I ask, why is the government of Mexico not suing Facebook for fueling the cartel violence in Mexico? Since it is apparently Facebook that is actually hosting an online black market for illegally obtained firearms. Hmm. And frankly, I would also note that uh, Facebook has far more money than the firearms industry. I would argue also, however... That's not just the Mexican government that is suing these gun makers. It's also the gun control lobby, groups like Brady, intimately involved in this lawsuit that the government of Mexico has filed against U.S. gun makers. And I don't think Brady really gives a damn about trying to shut down Facebook. I think Brady is very invested in the idea, however, of bankrupting or shutting down U.S. gun makers. That's the goal. Not to make social media a safer place but to stop the production of firearms in the United States, to put these companies out of business, and in return, make it much more difficult for U.S. residents to exercise their right to keep and bear arms. Don't forget, these same gun control groups also want to make it a crime for you to build your own gun, right? So not only do they want to shut off the ability of U.S. gun makers to manufacture their products, they want to put you in prison if you try to exercise your right to keep and bear arms with a uh, home-built firearm. Again, the end goal here is not public safety. The end goal is control. Control of firearms and control of all those who wish to exercise their right to keep and bear them. Insight Crime, however, sees it differently. They say stimming the online sales of firearms must begin with the broader problem. The massive flow of weapons legally bought in the United States and smuggled to Mexico, with guns bought in the U.S. pouring into the country and responsible for numerous murders in Mexico. It seems access to those guns is now becoming easier. The legal hurdles faced in Mexico to acquire weapons present a stark contrast with the lack of gun sale controls in the United States. Between 2013 and 2018, 70% of all guns seized by Mexican authorities were traced back to the United States. All right, now there's some some things we got to correct about this. Uh, the statement that um, uh, uh, the, the, with, with uh, the legal hurdles faced in Mexico to require weapons presenting a stark contrast to the lack of gun sale controls in the United States. It is true. There's a lot of gun control in Mexico. There's only one gun store in the entire country. And it is true that criminals seem to be obtaining firearms with impunity. Some of them undoubtedly smuggled in from the United States. At the same time, here in the United States, criminals are also able to obtain guns on the black market despite restrictive gun control laws. Why? Because criminals are willing to break the law in order to do what they want. So it doesn't matter what the gun control laws are. What matters is actually ensuring that there are consequences for breaking laws. And I would argue that the focus should be on consequences for breaking the laws against things like murder, armed robbery, carjackings, kidnapping, things of that nature. Not necessarily possessing a firearm or possessing a uh, quote-unquote large capacity magazine. I, I don't think that this is an argument for the United States to impose more gun control laws. I think, frankly, it's an argument for Mexico to get rid of some of theirs. Because clearly Mexico's gun control laws are not preventing criminals or drug cartels from illegally obtaining firearms or, you know, grenades. But they are likely inhibiting the ability of the average resident of Mexico 
to possess a firearm for self-defense. Uh, also, the 70% figure between 2013 and 2018, Inside Crime says 70% of all guns seized by Mexican authorities trace back to the United States. That's not accurate. 70% of all the firearms that were seized and traced were traced back to the United States. But less than half of all firearms that were seized were actually traced. Now, why would that be? Well, in some cases, maybe that the uh, serial number was defaced. They couldn't trace it. In other cases, maybe that they knew darn well that these guns didn't come from the United States because they came from either the Mexican military, uh, the Central American black market, uh, or even the overseas black market in firearms. I'm not saying that there are not guns that are uh, purchased here in the United States that are smuggled into Mexico, but that is not the only source of illegal weaponry south of the border. Clearly, if there are grenades being offered for sale on Facebook. And ultimately, that's the real issue here. We could ban guns tomorrow in the United States. It wouldn't get rid of the drug cartel's ability to arm themselves any more than our ban on heroin and fentanyl have prevented the drug cartels from flooding the United States with those illegal products. Products, by the way, which kill far more Americans than the drug cartels kill in Mexico. There is no way to ban our way to safety, either in the United States or in Mexico. Instead, you've got to focus on the individuals who are committing these violent crimes and their networks, not on legal, law-abiding gun owners. All right. Let's turn our attention now to today's Armed citizen story, our good deed of the day, our recidivist report. We'll start there with a story from CWB Chicago. Take a look at this headline. Man shot driver in Oak Park while on electronic monitoring for two gun cases in Chicago. That's right. Chicago's one of those places, you know, they got all kinds of gun control laws on the books. Sometimes they're enforced. Sometimes they're not. Never are they repealed in order to focus on violent crime as opposed to a mere possessory offenses. So uh, we got the case of Javanthi Jones, 22 years old. He is accused of opening fire on a car and shooting at the uh, driver of a different vehicle in Oak Park on Sunday while out on bail for two gun cases. Uh, according to prosecutors, Oak Park police on patrol when they heard three gunshots, and then they saw Jones firing a gun nearby. He tried to take off, but they caught him. Uh, later, an alleged victim showed up at a hospital with a gunshot wound to his lower back. Uh, witnesses allegedly identified Jones as the shooter, said he handed his gun to a woman in the crowd before he ran away. Uh, police found 12 shell casings at the scene. They found a bullet hole in the victim's car door. Uh, Jones now charged with aggravated battery by discharge of a firearm. In September of last year, Prosecutors charged him with aggravated unlawful use of a weapon after police found him carrying a gun after a domestic altercation. Uh, he posted bail and went home on electronic monitoring. That was September of last year. And then on June 19th of this year, he was once again charged with possessing a gun illegally, once again posted bond, and uh, got released on electronic monitoring. So even though it's theoretically illegal for you to carry a gun without a license in Chicago, I mean, it's a felony offense, right? Until you get convicted, there really aren't much consequences. You get arrested, you bond out, you get put on electronic monitoring. Let's say you get arrested again, and it's rent, cycle, and repeat. You get put out of bond, you get released on electronic monitoring, and you're told don't do it again. Yeah, Jones kind of screwed up the script here by being accused of now a violent crime. But a court worker did tell the judge that their analysis said that he should still release Jones from custody with pretrial services. Uh, the judge, by the way, said he respectfully disagreed. Instead, he set bail at $250,000 and once again ordered Jones to go on electronic monitoring if he posed the uh, 10% of that uh, bond. Um, however, the judge also held Jones without bond for violating the terms of his two previous cases. Yeah. Now, again, is any of this actually going to prevent a single violent crime in Chicago? I don't think so. Instead, these laws are primarily being used to prevent responsible citizens from exercising the right to keep and bear arms. 
potential criminals, potential violent criminals, alleged violent criminals who violate these same laws, slap on the wrist, sit on their merry way. Uh, today's armed citizen story from the Washington, D.C. suburbs of Montgomery County, Maryland, where a man shot and killed an alleged intruder who broke into his home. This was on uh, Monday, uh, I believe. Uh, yeah, Monday morning. Shira Goff, who's a public information officer with the Montgomery County Police Department, says the uh, homeowner said he heard sounds in his home, and then he went to investigate. And they said he was actually on the phone with 911 dispatchers when the dispatchers heard several rounds being fired. Officers arrived at the scene. They found an adult man dead inside one of the rooms of the home. Uh, homeowner is cooperating with investigators. Uh, police say that they're familiar with the home. There's actually a shooting range inside the residence. Nice. He says there's also a, a sign outside warning people about the shooting range. A sign saying, uh, birds aren't real. The internet meme. Uh, Montgomery County Police said today that they will not be charging the homeowner in this case. That this was a case of self-defense. Again, don't, don't know a whole lot of details. I think you got to be an absolute moron to target a home that warns of a shooting range inside. But uh, we really don't know anything about the uh, criminal or what his intent was. Again, we just know that the uh, homeowner in Montgomery County, Maryland, will not be facing charges in this uh, self-defense shooting. Finally today, our good deed of the day from Houston, Texas. You know, normally we talk about police officers being in the right place at the right time and able to do the right thing. This time around, it's, it's, it's backwards. There's a rapper in the right place at the right time and able to do the right thing to help out a law enforcement officer. That's right, rapper Bun B. That's a good name. We've really run out of, I think, good rap names, but I like Bun B. That one works. Uh, he was in the right place at the right time and able to do the right thing on Friday evening. Uh, KPRC reporter Vanessa Richardson said she was leaving the uh, uh, ALDS Game 2 uh, at uh, Minute Maid Park when she noticed a good Samaritan who pulled over to help a officer push a woman's broken down vehicle. Uh, okay, oh, so it wasn't the police officer whose car had broken down. The police officer was pushing a broken down vehicle, and then Bun B saw what was going on and helped. All right, this is still a good story. Still a good story. I thought the officer's car had quit working and Bun B got involved. But no, this, this is good. This is good. Because Bun B was in the right place. The officer did need help. And uh, the pair were able to uh, push the car over to the uh, side of the road. The uh, woman in the car did not want uh, her picture taken, but said that uh, she was very grateful. So uh, in the right place, at the right time, willing and able to lend a helping hand to a, a Houston police officer. Uh, Bun B, we thank you for your very good deed. All right, that is going to do it for this edition of Bearing Arms Cam and Company. want to thank you for being a part of the program, as always. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow with more of the latest Second Amendment news and information from all across the nation. Don't forget as well, we have our VIP Gold live chat with Mr. Ed Morrissey of Hot Air. That's coming up at 1.30 Eastern on Wednesday. And uh, don't forget to check out BarryandArms.com throughout the day for even more of the latest Second Amendment news and information that you need to know about. And if you like what you see, you can become a VIP subscriber. Just use the promo code GUNS, G-U-N-S. And you can get 25% off of your VIP membership at bearingarms.com slash subscribe. We really do appreciate your support. It helps us bypass the anti-gun media. helps us get stories out that you won't find anywhere else. Like the very first interview uh, with one of the main plaintiffs in the New York carry case. That was right here. A Bearing Arms exclusive. And again, it's because of your support that we're able to bring you stories like that. So we really do appreciate everything that you do. And uh, we want to say thanks by giving you some free content in exchange for uh, your support. We'll be back here tomorrow with more of the latest segment of news and information. But until then, be well, be safe, and be free.